Hey y'all, it's Genesis. I'm gonna show you guys 10 top highest protein sources that are all plant-based, not including soy products. So these are the highest protein sources that I found that don't include soy, that aren't any alternative meat substitutes that are processed, and that are just whole foods. And no protein powders as well, obviously. Being vegan for 10 years, wow. Being vegan for eight years, the only thing I really struggled with was getting my protein to be higher. I do drink a lot of protein shakes. I love like fruit smoothies and I add my protein powders in them. I do that at least once a day. But even with that, it's better to just get it straight from the food, like all your nutrients. You don't wanna be supplementing so much. You don't want to replace whole foods with your supplements, like even with vitamins. But I started doing more weights and lifting about a year ago. And honestly, as soon as I started to up my protein intake, I really noticed a huge difference in my physique, in the muscles that I was able to build. So I do really think that if you especially are bodybuilding or trying to tone up or gain muscle or on a fitness journey, up your protein intake and you can keep it clean and keep it plant-based if you're trying to go more plant-based. Here are some really good options for you. Some of the benefits of plant-based proteins are obviously help you can reduce your risk of chronic diseases. Weight management is a lot easier when you're eating plant-based. Some of you probably aren't fully plant-based but are plant-based curious or want to implement some plant-based products in your diet. It's really beneficial to do that. They're typically lower in calories and saturated fats, so they're healthier options. It will improve your digestion since they're higher in fiber. They're going to be higher in nutrient intake, so you're going to have a lot more vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants with plant-based sources. They are also sustainable and environmentally friendly, and they're cheap as well. People think that eating vegan is very expensive, but that's really only if you buy gourmet products at the store or go to vegan restaurants that are also gourmet and honestly if you just stick with whole foods it's cheaper to eat healthy as a vegan than to eat healthy as a non-vegan like steaks are really expensive so is meat products like they're higher priced than your regular staples your whole foods your legumes your seasonal produce, your veggies, your grains. And last benefit is let's just let the cute little animals be, okay? There's no need for that anymore. But it's just good to get creative and branch out and just find a meal plan that benefits you for your individual needs. I'm gonna break this down in different categories. We have the grains, we have the legumes, nuts and seeds, and then we have the plant-based meat alternatives. And then we have the last one is just, I don't really know what to categorize it, but it's the highest source of protein. Stay with me. Okay, so we're gonna start with our grains. There are many protein rich whole grains. The highest one in protein that I have found is quinoa, but there's also amaranth and teff. But quinoa, that's my number one, that one is a complete protein. It contains all the nine essential amino acids, so it's a really good one. You can swap it out for rice, and it's a good base for salads or just as a side. And that one actually has 4.4 grams of protein per 100 grams, which is equal to 3 fourth cups. That's going to be my base throughout this whole video. So the serving is going to equal 100 grams or 3 fourth cups. I'm just going to I'm just going to stick with that so they're all the same. Kino is 4.4 grams. That's a really good one. So for the legumes, we have a lot of high protein legumes out there. We have your black beans, chickpeas, kidney beans, peas, lentils, and these are actually all really high in fiber as well. So it's a really good source of protein. And they're very versatile. You can put them in soups, like on top of your salads. You can make chili out of them. You can put them in your burritos, wraps. 
hummus hey y'all it's future version me so i don't know what was going on with my audio in this video but there was a lot of static going on i'm just gonna cut out some of the parts that were too staticky and fill them in now while i'm editing coming in for number two as one of the highest sources of plant-based protein we have green peas so green peas have approximately five grams of protein but yeah then coming in for number three we have beans so this can equal black beans kidney beans pinto beans just all the different types of beans they will normally range from seven to nine grams of protein that's a pretty good amount and yeah so remember when you go to chipotle make sure you tell them to add in some extra beans in there okay now coming in at number four i used to hate these type of beans i literally refused to eat them when i was little but they have definitely grown on me and i absolutely love them now so we have lentils so lentils have approximately nine grams of protein just like the regular beans per 100 grams so they have a pretty good amount of protein and for my last in the category of legumes these are the highest ones and i will let you know right now chickpeas chickpeas have approximately 19 grams of protein per serving. That is a lot. We have chickpeas here all the time. I didn't think they had that much protein in them, but now that I know this, I'm gonna start sprinkling the chickpeas all over my salads. I'm gonna put them on my rice. I've made my own hummus before too, and I didn't know how much protein it had in it in the past, but I'm gonna start doing that again. And there is also a really bomb way to make tuna out of chickpeas, and you could probably look up recipes on Pinterest or TikTok, but you could put them into your wraps and it's just like a tuna salad. Definitely look into that because that has a lot of protein in it. So that's a good source. There's also chickpea pasta too. If you guys have never heard of Bonza, that brand is really good. I recommend it. It's just like a pasta brand, but they're made out of chickpeas. That's a good one. There's a lot of protein in that. Now for the nuts and seeds. We have a lot of nuts and seeds that are high in protein. We have pumpkin seeds, we have almonds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, sunflower seeds. So my next high source of protein foods is going to be number six, chia seeds. Chia seeds contain a lot of protein in them also. You can eat them as a pudding where I used to work, they used to make chia pudding and they would use coconut milk and it would become a pudding. You can even put like agave in it and fruit. Like it's just, it's a really good way to get your protein in a dessert form or like a parfait yogurt form. You can even put them in your smoothies or as an egg substitute. Chia seeds have 16.5 grams of protein in it. So yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good amount too per serving. So with chia seeds, you can even use them as an egg substitute, like for baking and where you would need an egg. It's a really good binder. So my mom has made oatmeal cookies and used chia seeds as the binder and it worked really well. So that's a good option for baking. Number seven, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds actually have a lot of protein in them and i was very surprised when i read this i underestimated pumpkin seeds also known as pepitas you can put them on your salads eat them as a snack i actually used to make these little nut bars and put spices on it and cook it so they became actual nut and seeds bars and i put pepitas in them i should start doing that again because that was really good and so pumpkin seeds are going to be 30 grams of protein per serving so they pack a punch and those little seeds do pack a punch so those are really good options to have on hand as a snack or just anything I'm gonna start bringing these when I go back to school, just like in a little bag. Okay, so number eight, we have hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are really good if you don't use any sort of protein powders for your smoothies, if you don't want anything processed. A good option is hemp seeds. When I'm doing like a cleanse or a detox or where I just wanna stick to only whole foods for the time being, I use hemp seeds instead of my protein powders. 
eating so much processed foods can't really be that good for you. So I'm, I probably am going to start implementing more hemp seeds in my diet. But I just don't really like the flavor. Honestly, they have a particular flavor and just they're just very nutty. Um, I'm not really a fan, but they are really good for you. And they are a complete source of protein as well. They have all the amino acids in it. So they're really good. And so hemp seeds are approximately 31 grams of protein per serving. So they those little seeds also pack a punch. If you compare it to a plant-based protein powder or just any protein powder, for one serving, it's usually 20 grams or 25 grams. For one serving of hemp seeds, it's 31 grams. Yeah, that's a very good alternative for a Whole Foods. Going into the meat substitutes, not including soy, there are a few meat substitutes that you would probably see at a restaurant. You could go for the jackfruit, the tempeh, the seitan, although jackfruit doesn't really have that much protein in it, but it does taste bomb. Hello, it's me again. I'm cutting in one more time. So as far as the plant-based meat substitute category, excluding soy, like I said, jackfruit, tempeh, and seitan, except for tempeh is a soy derivative. It's actually a less processed version of soy though. So it is healthier and it has a high amount of protein, but since we are completely excluding soy from this whole list, we're gonna go with seitan. So seitan is actually made from wheat and gluten. So it's another alternative if you don't want to do soy. And this has a high protein content. It has approximately 25 grams of protein. This is a really good one to opt in for in case you want to switch out some tofu or have some sort of meat-based option on there. And yeah, so seitan is a really good one. Okay, bye. Okay, and my last but not least, this is one that I did not expect at all. And I'm sure many people don't even think about this as far as a vegan protein source. But my number 10 is... spirulina so spirulina is a green algae it has all the nine essential amino acids in it so it's a complete protein as well you can add it to your smoothies or just eat it as capsules i do either one when i remember but spirulina has a whopping ready 57 grams of protein like what who said that plant-based proteins are lower in protein because last time i checked 57 grams of protein is a lot. <laughs> it just depends how much of the spirulina you want to put in your smoothies. Usually you don't put in that much, but if we're talking the same amount of grams to all of the other sources, spirulina is the highest. Spirulina has a lot of health benefits also. Like it's, it's really good for your skin. It has healthy fats in it too, like omegas and things like that. It's a really good option. And then I also have the chlorella spirulina capsules, the cracked shell capsules. Yeah, so these are just some of the highest plant-based protein sources that I have found. Maybe just swap some of the animal proteins out. It's just better for your health and sustainability. And I encourage you to try them. I would absolutely love if you shared some of your favorite recipes with plant-based protein sources. Until next time, sub for beauty, plant-based tips, and as well as nursing content too. So, I will see you next time. Bye.